Why do they keep offering me help? Do they think I'm not qualified? And the reality simply may be that everyone gets help. This is what we do. We try to develop it. That's why we're asking you if you'd like to have help. But this is one of those complexities of being a first or a pioneer. All part of what I have going on black quarterback city. And I know, I know 2010 people will, people are smart enough. Most of us are smart enough. Us are smart enough. Well, I'll just say this one. Many of us are smart enough to get over the, the term black quarterback syndrome and to be intelligent enough to understand that it applies to anyone who finds himself in that kind of position. So I put my faith in that, and that's why I, I finally settled on that title. Also, um, another challenge is simply it can be emotionally draining to be always wondering, is all of this help that I'm being offered, is it because it's part of the way things are done here, or is it a part of the fact that I'm the first person or the second or third person who's done this, and they think I can't do it? Just, it's exhausting thinking about that. These, are, again, this is a lot of the data that I got from my interview. And then there's the the natural social distance that exists between people. If you are 75 years old and you find yourself working, well, I'll give another example because many people are 75 years old and hopefully retire. But let's, so you can see it this way: when you go to a cocktail party. You certainly see the younger people talking to themselves and the people who are older talking, not talking to themselves as well. It's what we call social distance. This automatic social distance that occurs. We just tend to gravitate toward people like ourselves. Okay? And so there's this natural social distance. That's another challenge to overcome. And it can be harder to network if you are a first or a pioneer or one of the first in your organization. Okay, now let me also say this. I want to make this point that many times the second or third or fourth person will experience the same kinds of challenges that the person who is first will experience. Here's an example. When Jackie Robinson became the first black Major League Baseball player in 1948, by the way, I read about this. I, I, I was not at the game. Okay, I want you to know that. When he became the first black baseball player, the second one, the second black baseball player in Major League Baseball came like 11 weeks later. Now, they both experienced the same kinds of things, although we don't hear much talk about Mary Dovey, who was the second to with the Cleveland, the uh, Cleveland uh, Indians baseball team. Okay, so what did I learn about overcoming challenges? What did these people that I interviewed, what did they say? They always began with, you must be competent. So I want to, you to understand that I'm not, not talking about seeking sympathy. It's about what do you do to succeed, to overcome, to, to meet these challenges of being a first or a So you must strive to be the best, or as Oprah would often say, strive for excellence. Nothing short of excellence. Study, be prepared, keep your eyes open. Look around and see how other people dress. Self-assess, self-monitor. Okay. If you see other people doing something and they are successful because of what they do, you do it and you emulate it as well. But everybody else is already there. You self-assess or self-monitor and realize it started and you were there right on time, but you should have been there five minutes early probably. So you'd be there at the next meeting five minutes early, if not 10 minutes early. Self-assess, self-monitor. What else do we do to overcome challenges? Sometimes you have to be extra patient. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have to adapt and adjust to your the newness that people see in you. Yeah. It may not be fair, but you may have to do that. You may have to be patient. And other times, you may have to stand up for yourself and be a little assertive. And if that doesn't work, sometimes we just have to move on, move someplace else. Remember this in overcoming challenges. You are there to perform. You're not there to be a first. So it's not about walking around saying, I'm the first thing, I'm the first that. Okay? It's about succeeding. Being it with what feels when I say show off, I mean show it off respectfully, not in a boastful, in a boastful way. Other examples of uh, what I obtained from my interviews. Be grounded. Be grounded. Be, don't be arrogant. How do you become grounded? Well, you might be grounded in your religion. You might be grounded in your, uh, your, your exercise. You may be involved in yoga. But be grounded. Find some source that keeps you easy. 
some, something that can keep you, whether it's your religious principles or otherwise. Here's another point to, to overcome challenges. Remember that your boss has challenges as well. And seek to help your boss overcome the challenges they have. Relieve your boss of the pressures that your boss has. You know, when you're relieving your boss of your pressures, you know what that does for you? You become even more valuable to your boss. You become almost irreplaceable. They don't want to lose you. No boss wants to lose anyone that is relieving them of all the pressures that they have, that understands the pressure that they have. Let go of being a pioneer. Your life is not about being one of the first or a pioneer. It is. Don't let it be that. And sometimes the data, the data and attention that's drawn to that can do that. Just this morning, I sent a letter off to a young woman by the name of Katie Washington with a 4.0 for Notre Dame. She was the, she's been selected to be the first black valedictorian at Notre Dame uh, in May. I sent her one of my books and, and, uh, and my congratulations and so forth. But the switchboard has even said that they were surprised at the number of phone calls that they made. So my point is, it's important for her to be grounded in the competency. She wants to be a, uh, she wants a PhD, and she also wants to get a medical degree. So it's important for her to stay grounded in that, to be grounded in her pursuits, and not be grounded in, wow, all of the attention and acclaim that she's received. Okay. Overcome facing the black quarterback syndrome and being a first pioneer. Find allies in organizations. There are plenty of allies in organizations. I've never worked anywhere where I didn't have very good friends. Very good friends. This young man here, when he played basketball, we've been friends for 30 some years now. Okay, I have friends that I've, that I've worked with in other organizations. I've become their godfathers and they've become very good friends of mine and so forth. We help each other constantly. Find safe havens for yourself. You do need relief. We all need relief. Where you get your relief from, figure it out. And avoid, of course, avoid, and this is what many of the people that I interviewed said, avoid those relievers that are associated with medicine, alcohol, and drugs. I mean, that's a no-brainer. You all know that. Okay. Onlookers. Those are the people who are there to help. But they're not necessarily helping. They would be, could be on your side. So I'm speaking now to people who work somewhere or who have seen an onlooker, excuse me, seen a pioneer or a person. Think about it. Many of you here, no matter what your age, race, color is, religion is, there have been times when you have been a, a pioneer or a first. There are other times when you've been an onlooker. You were there. You were aware about the other person's challenges, their pioneer status, and you may or may not have been sure what to do. Many times we don't do anything. We just kind of sit back. I don't want to offend this person. I don't say anything. And then sometimes, we are also in the mindset of, well, I don't know why they brought that person in. We never had anything like that. Question, but I could speak up because there's some noise in the background. Yes. I think one important question is, it really, I think your book, I read it, I love it. I've given it to my kids, especially my, my 19 year old son, because it inspires him as he moves on in this very critical stage of his life. Um, what you said about going beyond just you know, in the organization, in the company, say you're in a room where people of similar, whatever, age, race, religion, are talking together, and you want to be a first to break that kind of social distancing that you mentioned. I mean, your tips are also very good for that. So how do you recommend uh, someone do that if they walk into a room where there is a click and they don't feel part of it, because they're not of similar whatever okay. demographic. Okay, I can tell you read the book and you read that particular article that's in the book where I talk about stretching. I, talk, I use the metaphor of a, a rubber band. That you stretch when you walk into that room. First of all, here, here's what I would say to you. You learn and get so much value by talking to other people, particularly if they're different than you, if they're older, have, have a different profession. I met a, uh, an older woman just a little while ago from uh, so she's an artist, and I don't even remember what I learned, but there was something she said I thought, gee, I never knew that. There's so much to learn, and I call it stretching. So when you walk in the room, you try it. 
to look around, and rather than going to all of the people that have the same title as you, or the same, yeah, all the people in the same department. When I'm in Alberta, and, and Bob, who's here from Alberta, one of my colleagues back there, he knows, and he does the same thing. We decide that we just, we're just going to go somewhere else. We talk to each other sometimes, but we also drift apart. We go talk with someone from a different department, a different discipline. And then you, you look and, and ask yourself, what happened from this experience? What came, out, what came out of me talking to the younger people rather than the people my age, rather than all the 39 year olds? I'd rather be talking with them. What did you get from talking to the, to the younger people? What did you get from talking to the people who were a different religion? What did you, sometimes, and I think I mentioned this in the book too, sometimes we're, we're, we're invited to different weddings and, and so forth that may be a different religion, and maybe you have it. Uh, in fact, when I teach diversity, I, I have what's called a stretching exercise where everyone must go somewhere and do some stretch personally and they have to write about it. What happened? Was it like what you thought it was going to be? Was it less painful? Was it more painful? What did you get out of it? And so forth. When you start doing that, you realize the benefits that come from it and you'll enjoy it. You'll be doing that the rest of your life. That's what I've been doing. Data for you. Uh, it probably took a year to get uh, the interviews, to, com to, to complete the interviews, but it took four years to write the entire book. I know it doesn't seem like it should. It's a, it's a, it's a funny thing. It, uh, it's, it's my first book. I've done some other writing, but uh, you know, in fact, I told you that I stopped one book and started writing this because this book I thought would take less research. But when I got started, I, I thought the book would be enriched by doing some research, and that, then I decided to interview those two people. And they're around the country, and uh, therefore it, it took time, phone call backs, and so forth. Yes, another good question. But I'm still going to be collecting data. My website is theblackquarterbacksyndrome.com. That's one way to get to my new website, theblackquarterbacksyndrome.com. The other way is simply drnormdavis.com. That's dr normdavis.com. You can get there either way. And what I'm going to start doing is collecting ideas that people have. So you'll be able to go to my website and make contributions, your own personal contributions about what people can do to overcome and to succeed when you are a first or pioneer. So you'll be able to go and talk about what you've experienced personally or what you've seen other people do personally to, to succeed. Uh, Norm, you've had a chance to talk to some young people. Have they posed any questions to you that have kind of surprised you or that have enlightened you? Well, what surprised me is I've always thought this book would, would be much more for you know, graduate students and maybe people that have, been, that have been in the work environment like Charles for maybe uh, 10 years or so. But they understood immediately the concept. In fact, one of the students the other day said, all right, you said black quarterback syndrome, but these people are in the book, there's only one that's black. And I said yes. I said yes. And you're responding to what I hoped other people would respond to. And that is the startling feature of seeing a person in the quarterback scene, you know, this position, okay, here. This is a white female in the quarterback position. She has a business suit on and she has high heel shoes on, okay. Obviously, she's not a prototype, is she, for a quarterback or a black quarterback. And so I said, that's the point of my book. It's my hope that people will be caught in looking at the cover of the book, turn it over, and read what some of the testimonials uh, that have been recorded said, said and, and realize that it's really a book for anybody. It's not a book for just black people. It's a, it's a book for... Uh, Here's a, a, a recent uh, example I've been using, and that is that uh, a person with a disability in a wheelchair could do the weather, right? I've never seen it. I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. And guess what? About a month ago, when I was using this example and talking to a friend of mine who's been trying to help me get on a radio station out there in Denver, Colorado, he said, Norm, 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 we have a weather person who does it from a wheelchair, okay? So that's happening. And I wonder about the challenges that she has. I'm personally uh, seeking uh, an interview with her. And whatever she has to say, I will put that on my website. And uh, again, I make it, it's available for all of you to, uh, to go to the website and make your own contributions, your own ideas about how to succeed if you are a first or pioneer and just simply how to succeed at work.
because that's what it's really about. Reality is, I use the name black quarterback syndrome, you know, you've got to have some spin, some hook, if you will. But the reality is, very often, the things that you need to do to succeed are the same for anyone, but they are special and different for people who are first and pioneers, I believe. And that's, and that's what I got out of my interviews as well. Any other questions? Hello there. It's okay. Mic on camera. Let's see. I'm going to ask my friend, back. I was having a conversation the other day, Mark, it was you. These are pictures that Bob took. Here's the uh, cover of Marlon Briscoe's book with his Super Bowl ring. Bob took that picture in 2004. Okay, but I've been, here's a concept. I believe that we this term diversity is being, it's so overused now that I, I think that we need, <laughs> he's telling me how to talk louder. He doesn't know I'm talking louder than I normally, way, at least twice Stretch, as stretch, you can do it. Twice as long, stretch, <laughs> as louder stretch. than I normally do. Should've practice practice your own medicine. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I believe a word that we need, and I believe people are smart enough to understand this word, is pluralism. Pluralism has to do with using the talents of all the people that are in the room, the company, the organization, whatever the situation is. That's what pluralism literally means. That's what it means. So, I put another word in front of that, and I think we need a world, certainly in the United States vision, and that would be what I call, we need to go and move up, UP, UP. What does UP stand for? Unconditional pluralism. That's, that's my thought. And I think it was you, you said, that's your next book. And I believe so strongly in that, I think that could be a, a next book. We need unconditional pluralism. The amount of talent and brain power that's right here in this room Depending on the business problem, we it's, <laughs> might not agree with this, but the talent that's right here in this room now, the, the, the diverse perspective, it's possible that we could solve business problems that 10 Harvard-trained MBAs could not solve. Okay, It's possible. Not likely we're going to have the opportunity. And, and uh, I don't know if any of you have ever seen that video that I show. show it's called uh, Wealth, Innovation, and Diversity. And what we see there, was the Ford Motor Company and designing Taurus in 1989, whatever it was. When they were designing that car, they actually invited, at the heartbreak of the, of the designers, they invited people to come and help design that car who actually didn't drive, they weren't designers, they didn't like Fords, but they were people who weren't engineers. The engineers were just the designers were distraught, but they came up with all kinds of new ideas that are that were put into that that poor uh, Taurus. Unconditional pluralism. But we need to make it more. We need to move from being such a trivial idea or concept. Keep talking about diversity, 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 diversity. What does that mean? It means so many different things to everybody. But I think if we can become much more literal with a word such as pluralism, we might have a chance to go a little bit further and, and get to recruit more. People. I think there are many people that are on the sidelines of what I'm talking about and what we're talking about. They would love to jump in if they just understood it and knew what they should do and what they could do. So that's my belief. It's what I've seen. And back to you people. Up. Unconditional pluralism. Any other questions? About the traffic, Linda? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I promised good weather. I didn't promise good traffic. Okay. Any other questions? All right, so if anyone, I guess we'll, we're closing at this point, and if anyone wants to buy a book and have you sign it, again, you pay for the book going through the, the register up there. But uh, let's see, you know, oh, here's my wife. I need to recognize my wife. <laughs> As you would know, an ardent supporter. She's here today making sure that my rose got pinned on correctly. And my shoes were soft, shining, and so forth. Uh, maybe I can ask her to help me or something to help me make sure that the count. What I need to do is let them know how many, how many books that I'm leaving. So that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.